Good morning, folks. Little Mercury swinging into view on Lasco C3 frames now. Those two big CMEs we expected to couple before tonight have indeed done so and made big quakes. We're going to run down space weather and a stunner from Harvard University, but we will begin over at spaceweathernews.com, and there's definitely some activity over on the right side, the western limb. But we're going to come back to that. Let's begin by focusing on the smile-shaped plasma filament magnetically levitating above the solar surface swinging onto the Earth-facing disk. This shape on the Sun has a bit of a pattern. It loves to release while on the southeastern Earth-facing quadrant as it did here back in 2012. Now the current filament may be slightly smaller than that one, but it is structurally and heliographically identical, a good chance to monitor for repeatability. Stepping back, we still don't have any significant solar flares, but that small C looks like a mountain on these charts. Earth-facing quiet wouldn't allow it. It came from just behind the western limb from an area now departed. Perhaps a bit of ejecta there, but actually a larger ejection took place due north as the filaments towering up as solar tornadoes lifted and released. They will not hit Earth either. Solar wind appears to have hit a bit of a plateau in speed as we look at 24 hours of data. The peak triggered a geomagnetic storm, but it was short-lived, and as it dropped out, lithospheric vulnerability set in just as the big CMEs approached the 1 AU distance ring. Coupling occurred with each as we got two large quakes in our 36-hour alert period, which is the new shortest window record for us, but alas, we did not forecast the locations of either one. Top news begins with this. I missed it back in August due to not even knowing about this journal, Little Fruit of the Gatherer in the Vein of the Sun and Biology. But folks, here's the big story. Two Harvard physicists have linked up the major mass extinctions due to cometary or asteroidal impacts with the crossings of the galactic plane. Just like a burgeoning solar system has a disk of material at the stellar equator, they say the best explanation for galactic equatorial crossings matching up with major impactors would be a similar disk, but which was astronomically dense with material, what they call the dark disk. How much fun do you think those two guys had writing that paper? Don't be jelly, Ben. Anyway, Southeast U.S. back to business as the development of this Earth spot is likely to take it north and away from land. Not great news for Bermuda, but alas, these models change and the intensification is all but guaranteed with another coronal hole stream on the way. For those who are new to space weather, you can become an expert in about one hour. Seriously, over at spaceweathernews.com, just click that big button. You'll be in the top 1% in solar awareness among the human species just like that. Also, folks, a quick reminder that if you sign up for the conference in this, my birthday month of October, we'll give you a gift, 60 days free at the website, and a chance to win a free copy of our new book coming this winter, The Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. April 8th and 9th in Albuquerque, New Mexico, no snow, no tornadoes, no monsoons, just observing the frontier in the high desert. We've got pressure and radar forecast, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.